My name is Peter Hiller. I am here in my capacity as the Joe Moore Trust Collection Curator and in the fortunate situation of a wonderful relationship between the Monterey History and Art Association and Joe Moore's family, particularly his two children, Patty and Joey. And over the years, the family developed a relationship with the History and Art Association, and Patty became a very engaged member of the organization. She was involved in fundraising activities and, and embraced the whole mission of the association. And that, that relationship ended up resulting in the History and Art Association acquiring probably the most extensive public collection of Joe Moore's work that exists any place in the country. One of the most endearing parts of the story is that when there was illness in the Moore family uh, back in the 60s, the association was kind enough to buy Joe Moore's artwork from them when they offered it for sale. And Joey always appreciated that they paid top dollar and they never squabbled about the cost of items, but they would just willingly pay for them. And that consequently had helped the Mora family out with medical bills and then as a result the association ended up with this fantastic collection that really spans the career of Joe Mora's artistic life. Joe Mora is a local treasure. He actually moved to this area in 1920 as a result of being given a commission to do the uh, Father Sarah Cenotaph at the Carmel Mission. And that led to him bringing his family with him. He had two young children at the time and, and a loving wife. And they moved from the Bay Area. They started out in Carmel and ended up moving to Pebble Beach. And the entire last 27 years of his career were centered here on the peninsula. And it was through those years that he first worked on the Cenotaph, which he is allegedly was actually quoted as saying was the most important career project of his entire life. And then he continued to establish relationships uh, with people in the community. He became very involved in the community. He was an actor in Carmel in the Forest Theater. He played baseball in the Abalone League. Um, so he got, it was one of the founding members of the Carmel Art Association. So he got very, very ingrained in the community and continued to just support it um, in any way that he could. In the late 20s, uh, Joe took a project on at the request of Samuel S.F.B. Morris to create a map of the Monterey Peninsula. And Joe went ahead in this project in his typical humorous style, but also in his attention to detail and historical fact. Uh, he was a, truly a historian and he loved history. He loved the California history particularly, and so he was able to at this request, create this beautiful map that it, it almost reads like a book. And there's so much information in each of the maps that he created that you have to sit down and, and read them and you have to go back to them over and over again to see all the detail that exists in them. And these were, this came about as a result of Joe's, first of all, his membership in the Bohemian Club in San Francisco, which was acted as a, a leeway for him to meet a huge number of very influential people. And those people consequently, in a number of cases, commissioned Joe to do work. And so it kept him, kept him in a steady stream of, of work and through hard times and, and easier times, he was able to um, continue to keep food on the table for his family and to provide for them. The, the maps came about initially at a time right before the Depression. And so the first two that he did, he did for Morris on behalf of the Del Monte Hotel, and Morris used them as publicity. They also put together a series of print ads that were used in East Coast magazines to entice people to come out to California to stay at the hotel. Joe drew a series of 12 pen and ink drawings that showed different aspects of the history of the community, you know, starting back in, you know, with the first explorers and going all the way up into modern times and at the time, you know, a culture that loved polo and where tennis was evolving and, and these, all those subjects are, are part of the visuals of that campaign. And so they, they worked together on those different things and 
It also led to a diorama that Joe created that was at the Hotel Del Monte. Uh, it was called La Novia, and it depicts a wedding party in the early Spanish period. Um, so, and it was, it was just a continuous um, engagement uh, between the two of them and that, that helped out Joe um, as well as uh, paid off for the Hotel Del Monte and their advertising efforts and their interests. The, the, the whole notion of the maps continued to evolve over a period of time and Joe's son Joey almost became what you could consider his business manager and Joe, Joey went to his dad and said, you know, I think if you, you, know, if you do maps in, in one case of some of the national parks, uh, the Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, and Yosemite, I think I can take them to those parks and I can sell them. And so Joe immediately went to work. You know, it was very little effort on his part to put these together, although they are incredibly detailed and meticulously researched, but he was able to put these together. And in fact, his son did then head off and sell these. And a lot of, at this point, we're rolling into the depression and by the grace of, you know, good thoughts, they were able to sell those carts even when the country was suffering from hard times and so it was really paid off for the family even if they were 50 cents each, which is about what they sold for at the time. The people were still somehow coming up with 50 cents and they were buying them and so it kept the family with food on their table in a very difficult time. And the, the subject, again, it continued to evolve. Some of the maps became commissions. People would come to Joe and say, I would like a map, say, for example, of San Diego. And Joe would, you know, in some cases, just sell the rights to the person. In other cases, they kept it in the family and used it, um, you know, just as income for the family. But there was, it, it was all part and parcel of Joe's expansive career and his ability to participate in just about any medium in terms of the visual arts uh, that was thrown his way. And it led to uh, dioramas. He did a series of dioramas of the Canterbury Tales, uh, and actually those were murals, and they're up in the Bay Area uh, to this day. He, he would, anything that came his way, if he didn't know how to do it, he would figure out how to do it and then go back to the person and say, you know, here's an idea and here's a way that we can solve this and, and you can get what you're looking for. And, and it led from sculpture to painting to, he was deft at uh, watercolors. He did a wonderful job of painting murals. Uh, he established uh, some murals in Carmel that were part of the Carmel Dairy. And again, it was a wonderful relationship. He knew the owner of the dairy, Earl Graff. They worked together and they traded, they bartered. And so Joe created beautiful murals that were decorative items in the dairy in exchange for milk and eggs and cheese. And it worked out perfectly to benefit both. And unfortunately, those particular murals are lost and, and we're still looking for them. But there are um, a number of examples of murals um, around uh, the area. He, he painted probably less than he did other things. I think his deepest love was sculpture. Uh, he did wonderful Western sculptures, again, that are part of the History and Art uh, collection. And it, he just, but again, anything, he was a photographer. Uh, he actually was an architect. When the occasion came up, he has a house that's um, still standing and occupied today in, in Monterey that he designed and was the architect on. And so it was just anything that came his way to keep food on the table and clothes on the back of his family uh, he participated in. We don't know why he isn't more appreciated on a larger scale. Um, he does certainly, in most cases, his name rings familiar to people in this community, but for a, a reason that has stumped me and that I've sort of dedicated, you know, part of my life to changing is that his name does not roll off your tongue in terms of art history um, as Frederick Remington does or Charlie Russell who, who worked in similar themes with the American Cowboy and that was a lot of Joe's work as well. And, um, you know, I, I think he, he was so focused on working and making sure that he could provide for his family. And he was a loving father. He was, uh, had a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, but I don't think he promoted himself particularly. I mean, I just don't think that was a priority for him 
uh, compared to just making sure that, that he was taking care of his kids and his wife. And so that became his focus. At the time that he was living here on the peninsula, Armin Hansen um, you know, was part of the Art Association in Carmel. And so um, you know, it was people of that era who were here. And it, they focused, it, it, a lot of the other artists of the time either painted or sculpted. And it's been speculated that because they concentrated in one area, their reputation maybe became more obvious uh, to people than Joe's, who did so many different things that, you know, certainly people are aware of his carts. That's probably what the public is most aware of. They were printed in multiples, and so there's potentially 10,000 of the carts that he did for the Salinas Rodeo. I think Joe Mora's dioramas are, I feel, completely engaging. They're beautifully detailed and uh, very, very accurate in terms of the uh, the sculpture and the positioning of the figures and you know just the moments that they capture. Some of his dioramas involved hundreds of literally hundreds of figures and they are meticulously crafted um, just to be beautiful in detail and, and tell a story and there's always a narrative element to it. I fell in love myself with his work that he did when he lived on the Hopi Reservation and in Arizona in the early 1900s. That was really that when I saw the work that he did as a result of that two and a half years that he lived there, that's where I kind of fell hook, line, and sinker uh, in love with his work. I had a pre-existing interest in the American Southwest, and when I saw the watercolors that he did of Hopi Kachina figures, they were unsurpassed in comparison to any other paintings of the same subject that I'd ever seen before. And, and again, the beautiful, beautiful detail uh, was just, uh, just knocked my socks off. And he was, um, allegedly, he did the entire series of paintings, about 40 paintings of these different figures. And then he realized um, that the models, the people who had posed for him, had changed certain parts of their clothing. Uh, so as not to really be completely captured by, by him, even though they trusted him, but they had still changed things. He realized that and he ended up tearing up all of the paintings and asking, requesting, maybe demanding to do it again. And they, because they felt so strongly about him and had accepted him in the community, they said okay, and then he went ahead and he redid all of those paintings again. We are very, very fortunate in this community to have a collection on the scale of the one that belongs to the Monterey History and Art Association that is the focal point being Joe Moore's accomplishment.